The prices of landed properties in Singapore has risen sharply over the last few years. Is it still possible for expiring Singaporeans to achieve their landed property dream? In this video, we will find out how much it takes to own a landed property in Singapore. Hi, I'm Vincent Woon from Home Envy. If you are open to considering a 99-year lease whole tenure, you can still find relatively affordable options ranging from $2.1 million to $2.4 million. These houses offer decent land sizes starting from approximately 1,700 square feet. They have a remaining lease of about 70 years or more and can be found in places like Westwood Avenue or even at city fringe locations like Bartley. For those interested in freehold, or triple nine leasehold tenure, there are still landed houses available in the price range of about 3.2 million to 3.5 million dollars. Some of these can be found in city fringe locations like Macpherson, Potong Pasir, or outside central location like Sabawang, and come with a good land size of more than 1,500 square feet. Now let's look at how to finance this property. Assuming you are taking a maximum bank loan of 75%, you will need to come up with a down payment of 25%, out of which 5% must be cash. And do take note to check with the bank if the price can match the bank valuation. If not, there may be cash over valuation which can only be paid by cash. Additionally, buyer stamp duty and legal fees are also payable. As shown in the table, to own a leasehold landed, you will need a total of approximately 602,600, while owning a freehold landed requires about 934,600. For first time buyers, this may seem like a substantial amount. However, if you currently own a property that has experienced good capital gains, Upgrading to landed property might not be as outreach as it seems. Let's consider a hypothetical case study here. Mr. and Mrs. Tan have recently sold their condo, resulting in cash proceeds of $300,000. After adding back their CPA refund and accrued interest totaling $400,000, which will be credited back to their CPF OA, combined with their existing CPF OA balance of $200,000, they now have a total of $600,000 in CPF funds. With these resources, if they decide to upgrade to a leasehold landed property priced at $2.1 million, they won't need to contribute any additional funds from their savings. In fact, after they upgrade, they will still have a huge cash balance of about $195,000 and approximately $102,400 in CPF, which can be used for reserve funds, renovation, or even to buy a new car. On the other hand, if they opt for the freehold landed property price at $3.2 million, they will only need to top out an additional cash amount of about $35,000. It may sound unbelievable, but it is achievable. Let's consider the income required for a bank loan to finance the purchase. Assuming both husband and wife are 40 years old with no additional commitments like car loan, the minimum household gross monthly income required to qualify for a 1.575 million bank loan for a leasehold landed is approximately $16,162. For a freehold landed with a 2.4 million bank loan, the minimum household gross monthly income required is about $24,628. The monthly installment for the leasehold landed property would be about $8,313, while for the freehold landed property, it would be approximately $12,668. Another important cost consideration is renovation, which can easily reach hundreds of thousands of dollars if SMC renovations are required. 
as the prices of raw materials and labour have gone up due to inflation. Additionally, if you plan to rebuild or reconstruct the house, this will be another major costing altogether, which could hit a million dollars or more. I hope this video has provided you with useful insights. If you find it helpful, please support the channel by liking and subscribing as it motivates me to create more informative content in the future. Thank you for watching and cheers!